In this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit more about functions and explore how you can build them and use them. So I talked just a little bit in the last lecture about this idea of having default values for some of your parameters. So let's go back here and go back to that idea of having an add one function. I can actually get rid of all of this right now too. So this is gonna be a function. And before we had that the parameter would be number and then we're gonna take number and we're adding one. So then when we run this, we could do like number equals three and we should get four. So we can run that and check that and it works out fine. So that's great. Right now though, if we run it without anything in here, it gives us an error because it says that the argument number is missing and there's no default. Sometimes we might wanna give default values and then if, if nothing's specified for that parameter, it will always automatically get run with that value. So we could do that a default value is one here. And then when we do it, it will use this value if we don't put anything in there. So we should get two. And you can see that that's what we get down here. So you can see in this example, we're doing it where we've got that the, the, the default is zero. So when we run it without any value in, it uses zero. But then anytime we specify that with number equals, like we did when there was no default, it will use whatever we specify as an alternative. It only uses this default value if we don't put anything in for that argument. You can also write a function with no parameters. So we could write a function that just prints out hello world. And when we run it by itself, we'll never put anything in these parentheses. Um, and it will still work. It'll still print that out. But this is pretty uncommon. A lot of times the only time when this would be an interesting thing to do is when some of that code inside is actually interacting with our system, with our computer. Uh, so there's one function that we can do in R called sysState. This checks our system and gives us the current date. So right now it is October 18th, 2020, and it got that from my computer. Um, when we do like the get WD for get working directory, that's doing the same kind of thing where it, we don't put anything in that those parentheses, but the reason why it can do something interesting even when we don't is that it is interacting with our computer to figure out something about the system or about the state that we're in. You can also, on the other side, include multiple parameters. And you can take your pick in terms of which have defaults and which don't. So let's take a look. We've been looking at adding one function. Now let's do a different one where we do add two numbers. So this one's going to be a function. So again, we start with this format of doing function with the parentheses. And then we've got the curly brackets where we'll put our actual code. So we can do first number and we can do second number. And maybe for the default for the second number, we wanna use one if we don't specify something, but maybe we don't want a default for the first number. We want the user to have to put something in for that. Then we can do first number plus second number. So since this is the last line of code that's happening here, this is what will be returned when we run it. All right, so let's run this so that we have that function defined. And then we can come down and we can do add two numbers. We can do that the first number is five maybe. And then the second number is two. So when we run that, it will add those two numbers together. But because we put in this default value for one of the parameters, we don't have to specify that parameter. And in this case, it will use that default of one. So if we run this, we should get six. And we see that we do. So I was taking advantage in that last piece of code of this idea that the last thing that happens, the last um, uh, thing that's returned by the code that we have in the function will be returned by the whole function. But if we want to, we can be very explicit about that by using this return and we say exactly what object we want the function to return. I think as you're starting to learn how to write functions, this can be helpful to include in because it really makes you think specifically about this idea. First, that I can only return one function, uh, excuse me, one object from the function. So in this case, it's gonna return this new number that we've created. And then second, you're thinking exactly about which of those pieces of the code that you've written 
is going to be returned. You could have within your code extra lines. For example, we could do the first number, maybe new, is equal to first number times one. I don't want to do anything that will change our result from being what we want. And then we could add that version to the second number. So this is letting us have two separate pieces of code that will get run kind of one at a time by the function. But this last line, what happens here, is what will be returned by it. The next thing that I want to talk about is the idea of if and else. A lot of times when we run functions, we'll want them to do different behavior depending on circumstances or depending on the functions that we put in. So I've got one example here where we're going to use that sys time to actually pull from our computer what time it is and then to do different actions if it's the weekend or the weekday. So we'll do this as a function called tell date. Again, since we're setting up a function, we can do like this and then the curly bracket. All right, and inside this, we're going to start with doing this cat. So cat is kind of like print. It's just going to print out some information. So we want to start by saying today's date is, and I'm going to show you up here before we put it in the function code just so you can see what, what it'll do. So that'll print out just this line. And then next, if we wanted to, we could put in that sys date. So this is going to actually check my computer and find out what time it is and put that in. You can see that it's using that, that kind of like information about time since a certain, since that Linux epic. So I think it's like January 1st, 1970. Uh, so we probably don't want it printed out like this. We probably want to print it out more for, for humans to see. So we can use some base R here. And it's okay if you don't understand this code. Um, as long as you kind of understand what it's doing as we, as we put it in the function, like that you've seen what happens with it, not that you could write it yourself. So we can put in this format, and then we can use these little codes to specify how we want it to be printed out. Um, so these you used to have to learn before Luber date. I know you probably won't know them, but um, we can do the lowercase b, and that's going to give us the the um, the name of the the um, month, and then we're going to put in the day, and then we're going to put in a comma in the year. So we're saying that we want month abbreviated, and then we want day, and then we want a comma and then year. All right, so we've got abbreviated month, day, and then we do a capital Y for year. So let's test that. All right, that's about what we want. Maybe we even want to put kind of like a period to abbreviate right there. All right, so that looks good. So this is what we want to have happen, but we can put this code inside the function and define that function, and then we can do tell date. And now when we run it, it will print that out, that today's date is this date. Let's add a space there. All right, that looks good. So next, we want to put this piece where if it is the weekend, it tells us, like, it's the weekend. And if it's not the weekend, it won't. So one way we can do that is we can use Looper date W day to figure out if it's the weekend or not. So we'll do that. Okay, let's do it outside of the function first. So we could do today's day, or let's see, today is weekend maybe. No, I think day, because then we're going to check and see if it is. Okay. So we're going to do looper date. And if you're writing code within functions, it can be safer if you're using something from another package to do the package name and two colons and then the function name you want to do. So we'll do wday and then sysdate. Let's see if that works. OK, look at today's day. So and then maybe if we don't remember these codes for like one is Sunday, and so on. I think that we can put in with W day to have some kind of label. So let's look at the help file there. Yeah, we can put label equals true.
And now it should print it out as like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, so we've got Sunday. So now we can test and see if today is a weekend. We'll do a logical expression for this. So we'll take today's day and see if it is in the set of either Sunday or Saturday. So we can check this. I am recording this on a Sunday, and so you can see that that's true. So let's bring this down into our code. And now we can use this. We can say if today is the weekend is true. And actually, I'm being a little bit more verbose than I need to here because this is an already a logical vector. We could just go directly with that value because that's going to evaluate to true or false. But I'll put it in here where we're doing that comparison with true just because I think for some people it's helpful to get this idea that this if statement is starting by checking if something is true or false. So if that's the case, let's also print out it's the weekend. All right, so let's try running that. And you can see because this is on a Sunday, it's printing out it's the weekend. If, however, we have this the other way around, so it's checking to see if that's not true, then you'll see it'll just print the date. Or conversely, if you're running this on a Monday through Friday, um, then it would also print out without saying that. Because this particular piece Inside the squiggly brackets after the if, it will only run this code if the condition in the parentheses behind the if is indeed true. So in other words, it'll go down when you run this function and R will start with this line and it will evaluate this line, this line, this line, this line, and it'll get here and it'll go through and then it'll check to see if this is true or if it's false. If it's true, it will evaluate this line. If it's false, it will skip all the way to the closed bracket and then keep going for anything after that. So these are examples of running that function. I was doing this on a different, on a different date when these slides were compiled. You can also, in addition to this if statement, you can actually stream down different conditions. So you can have if, and if that's not true, then you can have an else statement. Um, so that's just kind of two cases where it'll check the first one. If it's false, it'll check the second one, or it'll go into the second one into the else part. If you have several, you can do if, else, if, and then else. So we can take a look at that. This is expanding on the example I just did. So this was checking for th that date, and it can check and say if it's in either one or seven, so that's either Saturday or Sunday based on those codes. And here I wasn't using the labels, I just used the codes directly. So if this condition is true, then it would print it's the weekend. If instead it's Friday, so this condition's true, then it'll print it's almost the weekend. And then finally, if either neither of those is true, then this particular set of code is having it print out how many days until the weekend. So it's taking seven minus today's date. And because of the way that these codes work, where one is Sunday and two is Monday and so on, that should give us the number of days until the weekend. So what happens is R goes through all of these lines of code. When it gets to if, it checks and sees if this is true. If this is true, it runs this line of code, and then it'll skip all the way to the end of this if else statement. It won't check anything else after that. On the other hand, if this is false, it'll go down and check this next one. If the condition here is true, it'll run this code and then skip to the end. But if not, it'll keep going. It'll go down to this else and then run the code in that. And here's an example again. So this was compiled on October 15th. And at that point, it was two days until the weekend.